Hey guys, welcome to the 12th video of the Golang with CSRF token backend project series. In this video, I will uh, be taking care of the update refresh token expiry function in the myjpre.go file. Um, that's because we were working on this function called um, check and refresh tokens. And we came across all these different functions that we have not worked on yet, which I have defined, but I have not like, uh, like I've created the um, structure for them or the outline for them, but I have not really actually started working on these functions. And uh, that's why we're getting all those cookie lines there because Golang is saying that these functions don't really have any definition in them or or they don't accept the parameters the way you have, uh, you know, you want it to. So what we'll do is we'll actually start uh, working on these functions. So I'll start with the update refresh token ex uh, expiry function. All it's going to do is it's going to take an old refresh token and it's going to give back a new refresh token by just adding some time to it so that you know expiry time increases. So that's what I'll do. I'll say old refresh token string is accepted, returns new refresh refresh token string is returned, which is a string, and you have errors. Awesome. So we'll have JW dot parse with claims, old refresh token string, and model start token claims, and a function which takes a token JWT dot token. returns an interface with an error <clears throat> and this function will have some definition so this function will return verify key with nil and Then you want to have refresh token dot claims models dot token claims and and this way you'll get access to your old refresh token claims as well. And just the way we've been, do we've been doing it, uh, we have this boolean called OK. And if things are not OK, then you just want to return from this function. And now comes the most important part where uh, the refresh token expiration, refresh token expiration, you want to just add some time to it. Refresh token valid time dot index. Okay, so this was the most important line. This is what we want to do in this function, ideally. Now, um, we want to create the refresh claims. And we'll do that by, uh, that we have defined the token claims in the models. So we'll say JWT dot standard claims. And you have a couple of fields there, right? You have ID, you have subject, and you have expires at. And the way you will uh, access them would be uh, using your refresh um, token claims, old refresh token claims. So the reason we uh, got access to the old refresh token claims is because of is because we need it here, out here. This is why we did this whole part. Okay. And now uh, let's write here for ID, it will be old refresh token claims dot standard claims dot ID comma for subject will be old refresh token claims dot standard claims dot subject comma sorry subject comma and for expires, that will be refresh token expiry and comma at the end. Here also you'll put a comma and you'll 
add all refresh token claims dot role and all refresh token claims dot csrf so uh, all refresh token claims was really important and you got access to so many things right the id the subject the role the csrf token all of that we got access to from getting our token claims by using the refresh token and claims okay now uh, what you want to do is you want to create a RSA256 signer. So you say refresh JWT. Use the JWT library to create to use this uh, new with claims function. So say JWT dot get sign signing method RS256 comma refresh claims. And then you'll have refresh jwp dot signed string sign key. And this is how you get your new refresh token string. And you want to return from this function. So that's it. That's your update refresh token expiry function awesome uh, and now what i'll do is uh, we'll also work on our uh, revoke refresh token function uh, but actually um, let's actually work on the grab uuid function because we'll be uh, i'll explain to you where we need it for now let's work on this auth token string and it returns a string or an error. So in the grab UUID, you'll have jw3.parse with, with claims. You have your auth token string understand models dot token claims, comma. The function will have a token jwt dot token and the interface will be returned so from this function an interface will be returned or an error now this is the same function that we have used a lot of times um, jwt dot parse with claims uh, you get access to this function um, in the jwt package and you'll have some type of a function definition here so here you'll say return empty comma errors dot new error fetching claims and here you'll say auth token so this helps you to create your help you to get your auth token and auth token claims auth token dot claims dot models dot token claims and here we always know that uh, with this we also have our ok flag and we always check our ok flag just like we've been doing uh, in all the videos in the series return empty errors dot new error fetching claims and return auth um, auth token claims dot standard claims dot subject comma new so this subject basically that this is returning so if you search for subject you will see that subject that we have set for the refresh token string and for the auth token string, the subject is always the UUID. And this function is called, um, that we just created, is called grab UUID. Now to grab the UUID means that you have to access the subject, right? Because that's what we have set there in those two functions. To get the UUID, you'll have to first get the token, then you'll have to get the token claims, right? And inside the token claims, 
you'll have stand claims inside that as a subject, right? So just to verify that, if you look at this, so you have the auth claims, right? Which are inside the token. Token claims have the standard claims, deal with standard claims. Inside that is your subject. And that's what we have done basically out here. So it grabs the UUID, right? And um, I want you to keep this function like this for now. And we'll use it in a couple of places and I'll explain to you uh, why we need it. But just create this for now and just understand that this helps you to get this subject that you created yourself, uh, that we created some time back. Okay. Now uh, I'll end this video here and in the next video we'll start working on the other functions, these three functions. And then we'll also work in our middleware. So thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.